Hello, hello, and welcome to my YouTube channel, Volvo Christian. And sadly, I can't say welcome to a Volvo today because we're actually having a smart hashtag one in front of us today. The sister car or the cousin to Volvo's EX13. Built on the same platform, the SEA platform by Geely. But this is Geely and Mercedes version. It's 50% Geely and 50% Mercedes. So Geely has done a platform and infotainment and Mercedes has done exterior design, interior design. But it's basically a, a Volvo EX30 in yeah, a different costume. This is the smart hashtag one. Same, but different. But why do I have the smart hashtag one in front of me, you may ask? Well, in several of my Volvo EX30 videos, and especially in the Good, Bad and Ugly series, I several times smashed down the EX30 and claimed that the smart hashtag one offers a better package. Much better interior, more luxurious and premium, and overall a better package than Volvo's EX30, but especially in interior and tech. And I can't just talk the talk, I have to walk the walk. So that's why I have a smart hashtag one in front of me today. The main purpose are actually for myself and my own research, because I'm thinking about um, changing out my XE40. We've got the XE40 here in the background, actually. I'm thinking about changing out my XE40 during summer, and my plan was to go for the EX30 cross-country. At least that is on my top list. But it has some things I don't like, and almost all the things I don't like, I can get in the smart hashtag one. So the missing driver display, this one got, got it. The missing head-up display, the armrest, the overall interior feeling, the horizontal screen. So this is personally, this is primarily for me, personally. But I wanted to take you along with me for at least maybe one or two videos. At least that's the plan. I'm gonna make a exterior and interior walk around presentation of the smart hashtag one. You have probably seen that before this video. And in this video, we're gonna do a charging test and range test. I'm at now at 99%. I can also check that from the inside. Use my key uh, tag with buttons. I'm at 99%, I'm charging at 6.7 kilowatt. And already here, we have some things that are not available in Volvo's EX30. I can see the charging current on the screen here, and I can also see the amp level in the driver display. So 99%, estimates 299 kilometers. My plan is to drive south, starting here with 100%, and drive south towards Sweden until I reach 55%. And then I will just head back, back to this exact location, and the plan is to ar arrive here with approximately 10% state of charge. The smart hashtag one actually has a manual preheating button and, and I will activate that like maybe 30 or 45 minutes before arrival. I will take a picture of the trip computer to see uh, before I activate it so you can see if there's any difference. Um, but the plan is to go 10% and then do a charging test here. I'm almost at, yeah, still at 99%. 14 kilowatts. And I will compare my charging curve versus Volvo's EX30 charging curve. Um, yeah, as I said, the battery are surprisingly enough not the same. Volvo's EX30 has a battery on 69 kilowatt hours with the usable capacity on 65 kilowatt hours. But the smart hashtag one surprisingly has a battery on 66 kilowatt hours with a usable capacity on 62. So weirdly enough, even if it's the same motors, same platform, it has a different battery, but both are NMC. But I will compare the consumption and compare the charging curve. You will join me now for a couple of sequences while we are driving, and then you will rejoin me at this event to look at the results for everything. But um, I hope you will enjoy this uh, range test and charging test. I'm running 19 inch, uh, this is, yeah, what is it, we Nokian tires, Hakkaplitta probably, Hakkaplitta R5, 235, 45, 19. And it's the same both front and rear. We're still at 99% and it says that it's one minute remaining. You can also overlay what we got visible here. Because I really like these uh, two displays. 
one minute remaining. As you see, it's wet, it's raining. It's going to be a wet uh, run today, so uh, yeah, the consumption will be on the on the high side. But I hope you will enjoy this video. Let's jump straight to it. So you're now joining me on the inside. As you see, my state of charge, 100%. Estimated range, 300 kilometers, and you can see the standard 399 versus the dynamic. Really good at the percent is. So 300, uh, that is uh, based out of previous consumption and also probably outside temperature. Here you can see the um, preconditioning before charging. And here in the driver uh, monitor, you can see I have reset my trip, 0, 0.0, and it says also here 300 kilometers, 100%. Not sure if you can see the head-up display. I right, not that one, I just have to twist it. Let's see if we can poke under. Not sure if it's visible on uh, the settings I got right now on the camera, but there, maybe there you can see it. Pretty awesome uh, head-up display, actually. Now I've really messed it up. Get it back again. Yeah, but let's put it in drive and be out on our way towards Sweden. So just a little update, I have just uh, crossed the border between uh, Sweden and Norway. I'm 46 minutes away from my destination and I will now go into the car's uh, infotainment. Temperature uh, adjustment before charging, activate that. Battery temperature will uh, setting. And actually just like five minutes ago, I got a message here on the screen saying uh, Ideal temperature for battery charging, and I have driven then uh, one and a half hour. I see here. Uh, oh, back to the Android. Uh. So we now drive the last part until this uh, charging station. It estimates uh, it's pretty clumsy. This infotainment uh, to the car. I tried like Oslo Fashion Outlet. That's right nearby. You have to select. Route and it says arrival at 10% state of charge. But if you start it, you can't see anything. And I can't find it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I can't find. Um, or how do you get out? I can't find a charging station on this navigation. So that's why I have to use uh, Avenue. That's why I have to use the Android Automotive. So let's drive the last part. So we are back here at the uh, Oslo Fashion Outlet and Vastby connected at this uh, Ebony charger again. I actually drove it slightly deeper than I had thought or expected because my estimated state of charge at arrival here was 8%. But that just dropped and dropped and dropped and I actually connected at 3% state of charge. And let's now check the range consumption and uh, how far I managed to drive. So I started here with 100% some hours ago. Uh, and managed to drive uh, 248 kilometers with an average consumption on 25.2. I actually had, I think it was, I can overlay uh, the other picture as well. It was like 20, 
Let's see if I can find it. It was like 24.8 when I started the preheating button. I activated that, so 24.8 and it ended on 25.2. So you see it has increased slightly after I activated that uh, preheating function. But then again, uh, this uh, battery estimation in the driver display was so freaking tiny that I couldn't see it. So at like, I think it was like 19%, I went into the car's menu to check the bigger number on my state of charge. And then I saw that the preheating was actually went off again. I'm not sure if the battery was warm or if, if it's a time buffer. I have to see if I can find that out before posting this video. So I had to activate it again. And when I activated it again, I had like 25 minutes until arrival here. But I'm not sure why why it went went off. But um, yeah, either way, corrected at 3% state of charge. And I got pretty uh, slow speed. I can overlay the first picture when I connected. I was, at uh, 3% I got like 20 kilowatt hours so pretty uh, slow but then it was like 7-8% going pretty slow so I rigged up the camera and just uh, connected and then suddenly boom I was at 12% kicking 152 kilowatt so I think yeah, the, the clock says uh, 6 minutes and 17 but let's say 5.30 between 5.30 and 6 minutes I breached the 10% state of charge limit. And now, let's see if I open up the application for this uh, charger. I'm at I'm at 35%. So I had a little peak at 153 before it uh, tapered down again. You can see now how it's uh, looking. And I really like that you can see it from the inside because as now it's kind of cold, kind of wet. Let's see. Here is what you can see. Charging at 119 kilowatt, 37 percent state of charge. So uh, yeah, but uh, I think we're going to jump uh, on the inside for the uh, results of the charging session because now it's starting to rain. So yeah, let's jump inside. So that was the end. I just reached uh, 80 percent or 81. I've just uh, disconnected. The time wasn't uh, that impressive, honestly. But then again, I'm not sure if the pre-eating was active or... Um, yeah. It's kind of a struggle to uh, understand these cars. But either way, I disconnected at 35 minutes. So the 10 to 80 took 30 minutes. Give or takes a couple of seconds. But um, yeah. Slightly slower than Volvo's EX30, but um, yeah, same but different. So I think it's time to uh, wrap up this video. Um, but some final words on uh, the smart hashtag one. It's actually quite pleasant on highway driving. It feels more stable and sure-footed than Volvo's EX30. At least when you're pushing uh, the speed. But then again, it has a 10 centimeters longer wheelbase than Volvo's EX30. Here we have 275 versus 265 on the EX30. So that gives some more confidence and uh, stability on the road. So yeah, but all in all, good seats, good car for highway driving. Now it's time to head into Oslo and meet up with uh, Chris and his uh, EX30 press car. So that's it for this time. I'll see you in the next one. Take care and bye bye.